Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today we're actually going to change it up a little and do a coding problem. This is a use of code goal, the round three problem number one. And the problem goes like this. Suppose that we have uh, Bessie the cow, as all use of code problems have, uh, start at the top left corner, so the corner that's labeled one. And then she wants to get to the bottom right corner, labeled 14. So she moves along the this grid. Let's draw the grid, actually. So there's this grid, and then she moves along this grid, moving to either uh, vertically or horizontally adjacent squares. And every time she moves to a different square, uh, it takes her t minutes. So, for example, if she moves from 1 to square 5, and then 5 to 11, that will take a total of 2t minutes. And then, in addition, we also have this other rule, in that because Bessie is supposedly hungry, on every third move sh that she does, she also takes some amount of time to eat the grass on that square. For example, if she moves from 1 to 5, to 6, to 12, well that's 3 moves. So that means that since she landed on number 12, she will take 12 minutes to eat grass. And then, uh, for example, if you keep on going, you go move to 7, and then to 2, to 14. Well, even though she ended up at 14, this still is 3 more moves. So she has to first eat the grass at 14, which will take 14 minutes, and then her journey will be done. So in total, this, uh, this path that we just did will take t, 2t, 3t, plus 12, 4t plus 12, 5t plus 12, 6t plus 26. So the path that we chose right here takes 6t plus 26 minutes total. And now the question is, what is the, what path should a Bessie take such that she will take the least amount of time to get from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. So it might be a path sort of like this where you will eat grass at 12 and 14 or she might even take a path that isn't the shortest amount possible for example uh, going like this and uh, you might think that this is definitely going to be worse but in fact if for some maps if we keep track of where the third uh, place is, for example, in this case, it's 2, and then 4, 8, 7, and then 2, 14. Well, there's no third place after that. So in this case, she only needs to eat grass at the 2 section and the 8 section, so, or in the 7 section. So even though you might go off track a little bit, it might still end up being more optimized. So it can't simply just pick a shortest path. So the question is, how exactly do we find the shortest path? Okay, well, since we're dealing with the shortest path problem, you might think of the Dijkstra algorithm, because that is indeed a shortest path algorithm. So we might want to try to apply that to this problem. So the question first that we need to ask ourselves if we want to apply Dijkstra is, what are, what exactly are we applying Dijkstra on? Because that apply that algorithm is on a graph, and this is definitely not a graph. This is just a bunch of grids, a bunch of grid squares. So the question to ask ourselves is, what exactly is the graph that corresponds to these squares? The first thing you might think is that perhaps it's just the graph that is precisely having all the nodes be where the squares are. And then we just can connect them like so, adjacently, and so on and so forth. And this might work for our problem. However, there's a little bit of a tricky part that might not make this work out, because there's the special case that every third move, Bessie also eats the grass on that uh, square that she lands on the third move, taking however many minutes that it, that square dictates. So uh, simply applying Dijkstra on this graph probably 
will not work. Because how are you supposed to keep track of when is the third move? Well, maybe you can make it work out. But I have a slightly different solution. Instead of considering uh, when uh, it's the third move and keeping track of this all the time and then uh, adding the extra minutes on this graph right here that we have now, instead we can make it simpler by simply not having this thing that we always need to keep track of by considering instead of having one node on each square, we can have three nodes corresponding to each square. And well, what are each of these nodes? Well, let's zoom in on one of the nodes here that we have. And in each of these, we have three nodes. So the first node represents uh, when Bessie lands on this square such that it is her move, her current move is one mod three. So it is either her first move, fourth move, and so on and so forth. The second node represents when her move is two mod three. And the third node represents when her current move is 3 mod 3, i.e. when she needs to eat grass. So if we consider two nodes here with 1, 2, and 3, how should we connect them? Well, obviously the big node connect, connects with each other, the nodes that we have right here. But how do the nodes inside connect? Well, since if you're 1 mod 3, and then you move, then you move to a 2 mod 3 node. So it connects like this. And if you're a 2 mod 3, then you move to a 3 mod 3 node. And finally, if you're a 3 mod 3, you move to a 1 mod 3 node. So in this way, we can connect the edges between these three nodes uh, in this certain way in order to take into account the, the fact that Bessie needs to eat the grass at every third move. So now we have a format for our graph. We need to apply Dijkstra to it. So first off, we need to be able to implement this, this actual connection. We have to actually create this graph. So in order to do that, we should probably uh, create a node class in our program. And I'll go over what I do there. So once we create our node class, we can uh, connect them by using a bunch of for loops and conditionals, and hopefully it'll all work out. So now once we have uh, this graph done, let's go over how to actually apply D Dijkstra. So if I'm pronouncing Dijkstra wrong, D-I-J-K-S-T-R-A is how you spell it. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I'll just call it Dijkstra for now. All right. So the question is now, how do you apply Dijkstra? And let's think about how the best way to do it would be in this case. So we start out at node number one. And then uh, on the next move, we consider each of number one's neighbors, five and three. And then we see uh, how many minutes it takes to get to each of these neighbors when we start out on number one. And then uh, once we have this done, we stop considering node number one, and then we start considering node number five and node number three. And then we repeat the same thing. On node number five, we consider moving to all of its neighbors and the amount of time it takes to move to all of these neighbors. And similarly, on node number three, we consider the time it takes to move to all of these neighbors. And then we store this time to each node that, uh, that we move to in order to make sure that we can keep on doing this. So what we want to do here is to make a queue. So in the queue here, we start out by putting our first node, number one. And then once we put on our first node, we can check each of the neighbors uh, and see how many minutes it takes to get to each of those neighbors. So on number one, it will take zero minutes because you start out there. Number three, it will take t minutes. And number five, it will also take t minutes. So now once you have that down, and by the way, for the zero, you'd store on the node one mod three or zero mod three, 
right here, and for the three and five you'd store in one mod three because Bessie made a move. So once you have uh, the time it takes to get to three and to five stored, you put them into the queue. So you can check their neighbors. So once you have three and five, you can first check three. The neighbors are one, 11, or sorry, one, 14, and five. So you check one, which will take two T minutes. And note that this one is not the same thing as the first one we have because this one is stored in node for 2 mod 3. And the first one is stored in node 3 mod 3. So these are actually different nodes. So we have 1, uh, 14, and 5. 14 and 5. And then we keep on going with 5. We put the neighbors. And of course, we have already added uh, the neighbors of three by now, so on and so forth. And then we keep on repeating this. So the question is, when do we limit ourselves to not add a neighbor? Because obviously, if we just add every single neighbor every single time, this is going to take forever. It's going to increase the number of neighbors exponentially. So we need to have some sort of condition that tells us when to not add a neighbor. Well, Let's first think about when we do add a neighbor. So, of course, if we reach a node that we have never visited before, we definitely want to add uh, that node into the queue because we've never checked it before. However, if we have already visited, then we probably don't want to add the node. But there is a special case when we still want to add the node. Because if we visited, say we visited 5 again, we went around in a loop, and we've like so and then let's say we visit 14 again all right and then if we or actually this is not very accurate say if we uh, visited 12 like so and then there was another path that was longer that ended up visiting 12 by the time we that was not longer actually it is longer okay so by the time uh, our longer path visits 12 our shorter path has already visited 12, so 12 already has a value stored in it. But let's suppose that the value stored uh, when we reach it in the longer path is smaller than the previous value that we've already stored in it. Then in this case, everything that happens after the 12 that used to use the big value, we should probably use the smaller value instead. So in summary, we should add, add to Q whenever there's a new node or uh, there's a new smaller value. So when either of these things happen, we should add the node. So uh, in any other case, we just don't add the node. So this way we can make the time a lot shorter. It won't be exponential anymore because uh, in the majority of the case, we won't be adding nodes that we've already visited. So now that we've done, uh, we've finished talking about how to actually implement this Dijkstra, let's take a look at actual code. Uh, next week is AMC 10 and 12. I wish you all good luck. And today we're going to be doing an AMC 12 problem.